Okay, guys, I I realize I'm I'm very close to uh, having these my lathe put back together. Now this is the piece that I overshot and made too small in diameter, but I used it to go ahead and see what my abilities were going to be as far as you know can i can i make the part and just you know just kind of screwing around and and using the bandsaw this is actually damn near perfect if it wasn't so small in diameter but I have the right diameter piece here and I can get two of them out of this. My problem is, is cutting this. Now I cut this on the Harbor Freight, I don't know what the numbers are, bandsaw, it's the red bandsaw. Um, I've tried uh, all my parting blades and I, I can't touch it with a parting blade um, bandsaw I'm afraid that um, I'm not gonna be able to cut it accurately so I'm gonna take the piece that I just cut in the bandsaw and see if um, if I have any luck um, facing it off in the, in the mini lathe. So if I can face it off, I can be sure to get an accurate length. Um, I'm not going to waste my time grinding something that I can't cut to length. So let's swing this around. Make sure I turn this on so I can see. Okay. So we're going to be using the same tool that we did whatever we did to this thing. Oh, what did we do to it? We, we cut it down to diameter. Where did I put that tool at? Here it is and it probably wouldn't hurt to put a new insert in here i have like the blue nano insert that's not what this one is it's just the plain old gold version of the blue nano i don't know if any of that makes any sense or difference because these it seems like all the inserts I have are just generic inserts. They never come in any packaging that say anything. Sometimes I'll order an insert and it's like, it's the same shape that I wanted, but it's some kind of weird size. So I'm going to see if I can part, if I can face off. I'm gonna try it again with the carriage lock.
Okay, with the uh, height set correctly, I I believe I can put my faith in in that. Let me raise that up a little bit. Where the hell were we at there? I didn't even have the thing. I didn't even have the tool down all the way. Unless it worked itself. Unless it worked itself into that condition because of the stress. I sometimes get stressful. Tell you, I don't know why I'm doing this like this. I have a, a height gauge. Let's clean that off. Get that down there. Get this tool blank. And let's lock it and see what happens to it. Okay, I like that. Let's see if I can show you. It might be just a, it might be a tad high. I don't think so. That looks pretty good. Let's see what the cut reveals. I used to crank these things really tight. I don't think you really have to. We'll try slow this time. I'm thinking that's guessing that's I think speed is going to be needed. Go ahead and play this through. that's going to be I think that's going to be good enough for uh, what we're doing the parting blade definitely wasn't going to work put a new insert in there. Yeah, I think that's fine. Well, it looks, where's the original piece? You know, let's take that original piece and run my same file over it. So 
And here's the original piece. Okay, my piece is harder than this. This is hard, but I'm marking it. Am I? Yeah, I'm definitely cutting that. Here's the material I'm going to use. I can put it in this groove, give it a little advantage. It doesn't, it doesn't even, doesn't even mar it at all. I wonder if that's going to show up in video. Sure it is. Okay, now it's time to go shape this into two of these that aren't damaged. So let's move the camera. grinder warrior it's a harbor freight wheel so my first angle is going to be this back angle and that is about like that about all I can handle.
let that cool down a little bit. Let's come over and hit the other side. Light on this side, a little more on that side. And we need to get in the water again. close on this one. lost my water. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting close. get some cold water okay wow I poured that cold water in there <laughs> I haven't even ground anything yet and it's still it warmed up that water well let's see if I haven't screwed this up I need to get more I need to get more right angle into it Sometimes you're done when you're done, you know? I don't like it facet I have there. But that doesn't. See, I'm gonna screw it up by trying to fix something that doesn't really matter. Let's go look at it in the light. Oh, I'm a little, a little nervy, man. A little. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's dig out the piece that we've been grinding on. Let me dry it off. Yeah, I got, an, there's an extra facet or whatever where it's not, it's not perfect, but I'm not how, sure how well, I, I see I have to look at it, I Can't really concern myself with the camera. Well, it's a little, it's deeper, but I don't think the depth matters as long as the height is right. And I think this, I think. I think, you know, un, un, unbeknownst to me, but I think this flat up here is lending it a little more strength. I'm not sure why they had that angled off like that. But they both had it. But, let me say, that seems like that flat kind of bolsters that. I think we have a working part here. We just need to get it cut to length now. And then we can turn it around and make another one. Put them together and turn the lathe back on!
about as long as I can hold my breath. I don't want to breathe that crap in. What kind of wheel we have? Bench Grinder Warrior. It's a Harbor Freight wheel. So my first angle is going to be this back angle. And that is about like that. about all I can handle okay let me show you where I'm at of course I don't have the length I need to for the vise to hold this in the saw um, I did however hold it with my fingers like an idiot and I got a little bit more than halfway through. At least I'm halfway through the, the ear protection warning. Can't find my hacksaw. You know? What kind of world is this? When every tool goes back in its place after it's used, and then when you go to look for it, and then there's, you know, it's a pretty big thing, you know? It's a big frame with a blade attached to it it's not like it can just be shoved underneath something in a drawer unless you got really big drawers I guess so let me see if I can find the hacksaw Okay, here's the new one. This is the new part, and this is the old part. The new one. Yeah. 
Okay, here's here's the new piece. I'm sorry, this is the old piece. And this would be the new piece. The new piece is 18 thousandths taller. And I kind of instinctively did that flat, but there's a reason that flat's up there. That flat rides on the bottom of this plate. Now, the one I made that was too short for the situation is right down in here. And we can see that making it strike. Now, this one here is 40 thousandths taller than the original one. It's not the one we're using, but that's just the fact. And uh, it, could, it can be too tall, but without rubbing the bottom, I don't believe it can be too short. So, the way we're going to line that up is let's do this out here. It's on the center line. So, basically that's it. Now, the one we're installing, I put it back on the lathe and I took a thousandth off the, just gave it a little lead in to help get it started. Um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put this piece in the freezer. I was going to get dry ice. And I still might, if I wait till tomorrow, I might just get, I don't know, if I do, maybe I should wait and do both of them together and dry ice would make sense. Um, because I could cool down keep both parts nice and cold, get the torch the gear up to about 200 degrees, and then um, if I can get the part around minus 10 with the dry ice, it might just slide right in. But uh, let me tell you, there's a, quite a story. This didn't want to get made. Let's look at that again compared to the original. The new one is 20 thousandths taller. Because I don't think the height is so much an issue as just the roundness of the edge. This was the reverse gear, and this one wasn't bad compared to. See if we can get a peek at the forward gear. No, this is the one. That has some wear. Let's, let's compare that one to the other one. There's both old ones. So the reverse is almost acceptable. Obviously this forward one is worn a bit more. So I think it's stick out is going to be different also. Hopefully 
its diameter is going to be the same. But if not, hopefully it's smaller and I still have a piece to work with. Okay, this is one part that didn't want to be made. Didn't want to be finished anyway. Um, this was uh, this was one part that didn't want to be made in any hurry. Um, man, uh, so I got my original piece. And I then I got it formed, and then it's time to put it in the bandsaw. Well, I don't have enough length to fully engage both jaws of the vise on the bandsaw. I was able to move the the moving jaw. I was able to move that out and get a good surface contact. But I was only gripping half as much material on the fixed jaw. So, true to my nature, I'm going to hold it with my fingers. So, I actually did hold it and got probably halfway through the cut. And then it just got to be ridiculous. So, uh, no problem. You know, put it in the vise and I'll hacksaw it. Can't find my hacksaw anywhere. Still don't know where my hacksaw is. Oh, I got this baby. It's a 20 volt max DeWalt reciprocating saw. CXR version. Cannot find any blades. I had two in my hand in the last couple days. I remember, and I remember not taking the time to put them in the pocket of the bag where they belong. I remember saying, well, I'll put them right here. Well, I have no idea where right here is. So then I got this. It's a cutoff wheel. Well, it probably would have been okay. It's a little thicker than the bandsaw blade and the hacksaw blade. So, I really, I really counted this out. This is, it's not going to, we're not going to use that. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm terrible at cutting straight lines with those. So, uh, I still haven't found the hacksaw. And this is hours have gone by. And then I, um, you, know, you ever look in a drawer, you've already, you know you've already checked, uh, but you, you, know, you look again. I'm looking, from here I'm looking at places I've already looked at, knowing I already looked, but I'm still looking for the hacksaw. God, it's maddening. <sighs> but anyway... I eventually found this in one of the cabinets. It holds a hacksaw blade. It's kind of. Most of the blade stays in the handle and you're supposed to use this three inches, two inches here to cutting. It works. You gotta remember to breathe. You're doing that. If you don't breathe, you fall over, you pass out. So eventually I got this done and this is uh, what the finish of the cut looked like between that and the bandsaw. And I have plenty of length on this. I can part off the rest. Here's the parting job on the um, piece that we just made. 
And like I said, I just put this on there and I put a slight taper there on the end, maybe a thousandth. And um, I have every confidence in this. This is 20 thousandths, 18 thousandths taller than the old one that was in there. And the old one wasn't worn that bad. I, I, I really didn't have any issues with reverse. So. I guess that's my story. I was getting ready to just give up and, and paint. I, I'm, this is like, you know, this is like 99% of the battle is done, you know? We're almost there. We make one more of these, get them installed. We start, you know, the things that are going to slow me down are not the things I thought were going to slow me down. It's going to be getting the oiling system hooked up properly. And it wasn't in the beginning. Um, what else is there over there? Yeah, that's the only issue I have with the headstock is getting that, uh, finding out where the bottom of that oil line, uh, where it terminates at. I, it's, it's basically, I think it's just a siphon. It's being sucked up from the bottom, the oil. The red thing up there on the top gear train is the pump. And, uh, I don't know why it would need to have all that plumbing on the bottom if it's just down there as a straw, but apparently it does because, like I said, we, I never got the wash of oil that you would expect when it was running with the top off. Not like Chris Simpson did. Chris Simpson has a video of his black Pratt & Whitney and, uh, I don't know if he had the room lined with pig mat or what, but he, he had to cover off and be damned with the oil. He was letting it fly. I need to go back and watch that. All right, guys. I haven't read the comments from the last video, but I appreciate, um, I appreciate the fact that you are commenting. And I hope the... Um, the background jabber wasn't too distracting. I forgot I was watching a YouTube video or listening to a YouTube video while I was uh, recording that last segment. Okay. All right, guys. I'm pretty. I'm pretty stoked. And you know what? The little, the little freaking mini lathe is getting us there. Somebody said, "Oh, now you can sell that thing." Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm holding on to it. One thing that I did sell, I, I, I sold my very first lathe. I had a Unimat. And, uh, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. I couldn't do much with it. Now that I know what it is, what its capabilities are, and this and that, well, you know, I could have been, you know, productive with it. But, you know, before selling it, I bought, you know, all the accoutrements. And, um, I had a, uh, all the type of boring bar attachment where you, you know, it's, a, it's like a chuck and you adjust it and it, it spreads the single cutter. And, um, yeah, I bought new, I had new belt material, new belts for it. And, new bearings and I fixed it up nice and um, and sold it so. okay please like and subscribe tell a buddy bring a friend can you tell the guy's a little tired too I don't know can you yeah he looks tired he's getting ready to paint that thing now I think I'm going to paint the lettering. I think the lettering's going to be red or black. I think Fred would vote for red. I 
I wonder what Jean Paul would do. Hmm. 